What's going on, people? Welcome to the match preview. The Palace are back. Massive 10 games coming up. First up, we've got Leicester. Joined by T here to look ahead to the game. As always, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to not miss out on future Palace content. And let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. T, right before we just started, I said, is it start of a new era or is it just an old era that's continuing? How would you sum up going into this game with Roy's first game back? Roy reincarnated. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that's oh, the best. Man. I think mean, that's I literally that's the, that's the best option because you can say it's the old era, new era, but I mean it's technically a new era. But you know we're continuing from the old era in a way. But look, it is a new start of the club. Forget about errors. It is a new start of the club. Um, Roy is back. Of course, he's a manager that we've known about, but he's back with an improved squad. Um, yeah. it, and it's going to be a massive game against Leicester, so we'll be talking about that um, in depth as well in terms of the changes that we're expecting and how can we solve our problems. But let's start off with Roy. Improved squad, back at Palace. Um, look, after a few days, after an appointment, I actually had time to calm down and I, and I look forward to the next 10 games, in the short term anyways, because, look, he's got an improved squad and we yep. saw what happened in 2017, um, 18 season and the early times when Roy was at Palace, we weren't playing that bad. We were, you know, getting good results, scoring goals. And towards the end of times, yes, it was dull, but it was dull because his tactics played a part. Um, yep. But also we had an aging squad. We had an aging squad. We lacked creativity in the squad. I feel like we've got a better squad now than when Roy was previously at Palace. Yep. But for you, T, how do you see Roy's time here now? 10 games ago. Do you think it's a case of, you know, fresh start, improved squad, or are you worried going into these 10 games? I don't know, man. I mean, the reason why I kind of feel like, you know, uh, improved squad, fresh start, is just because, like, I, I watched the interview that he had with um, with, Palace, Palace uh, with, with Palace TV, and yeah. he seemed positive. Like, you know, he... he it seemed like he was he's going to want to go out and play, you know, like hopefully positive. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's like, you know, I want energy. I want fight. I want guys who, who want to win games, who want to go out and score goals. And it's like, all right, Roy. Well, let's, yeah. let's see, to be see fair, I felt the same as well. But then words, I would just, but just I mean, words, words say, just, we want to see action. Words we want to see action. Words. Yeah, yeah exactly. words that's why, just be words I mean, and we might – we might come out in a in a in a four four low block and pray for dear life. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's one of those things, man. You know, maybe looking back on the past, some of his actions and some of his tactical choices were almost a needs must because, like, what you talked about with the with the aging squad and with you know not a lot of attacking options. I don't think that's the situation with this current squad. So, um, I'm I'm interested to see. Number one, um, what formation he decides to deploy. Because this is a game where we can play on the front foot, I think, if we want to. Um, and then I'm also – yeah, and, I, and I'm also interested in, in seeing, um, along with the, the, the formation, who he puts on the pitch and the tactics that we employ. I think those are the three things – excuse me, from two, three. Those are the three things that I'm, I'm really interested in seeing, you know, because – we could come out. I think it's either going to be four four two or four three three. But just interested to see uh, who he puts in those positions and how he decides to have us come out and play. That's that's the fascinating thing about this situation because we know Roy and how he likes to manage. We've seen at, at Palace first time, and we've seen the good times. We've seen the bad times as well. But here, when you're talking about a manager who wants to fight, you know, these are some of the words that he said in the Palace TV interview, and he was all exciting. Um, the way he described that exciting football kind of um, yep. that's the sense that I've got from it. It's yep. like, are we expecting something different? Is it going to be a change of formation? Is it going to be a change in attitude? Because we, we've seen both sides of it. We've seen him be extremely negative because he didn't want to lose games rather than win games. Yep. But you know, there's been some times where we've scored a few goals, where we've had games where we've scored three or four goals. But then again, we're in a relegation battle. So I wonder how he wants to approach this. Um yep. previously at Watford, of course, they basically got relegated under Roy. Um, maybe he might learn a thing or two there as well. But I would like us to be positive. We need to not, you know, we need to respect the opponent to a certain extent, but we have to also realize the talents that we got on the pitch. 
And yep. so far this season, we haven't seen the talents. We haven't seen the talents to the extent that we should have seen. There, there is some quality in this team and there are some weaknesses, but the quality is not really shown. And now there's going to be some players that we're going to be talking about. But for you, we've been struggling to score goals. Yep. So what do you think Roy needs to change to get these players scoring goals? Is it a change of, you know, maybe a strike force, maybe change of formation? I think he'll go over the 4-4-2, you know, honestly. I do mm -hmm. think he'll go over the 4-4-2, especially in the short term anyways. But it might be worth... I, it could go horrifically wrong. We're talking about Mateta and Edward, but it might be worth starting both of them up front. So yeah. both of them up front because they're games you'd think, anyways, based on paper, would complement each other. Mm. But then again, we've known that Mateta ain't that physical striker that we've all expected. I mean, he can right. get bodied off the ball easily, just like right. Edward. He ain't that, he hasn't been that finisher as of late, anyways. He's a player low on confidence. So for you, what does Roy need to change for us to? keep you know start scoring goals because that's been a massive struggle and unless we score goals we ain't winning no games i mean i think it's a couple few things uh honestly d um the first thing that stands out to me man is is it's it's here it's it's the mentality it's the confidence he's got to get a lot of these guys confidence back mm. like it, namely edward you know what i'm saying like we know that he can score goals we've seen it before you know what i'm saying he is a talented player but i think the thing with him is it, he's very cerebral. You know what I mean? So, um, and this is, you know, uh, an area w uh, of uh, where Roy may have some expertise as comparative to Patrick Vieira, who was a little bit more green in, in his in his managerial career. You know, um, I'm sure Roy's had this situation before where he's needed to get um, a, a misfiring striker back on his game. <laughs> He's had, you know what I'm he's had a few, trust me. Even at Palace, you might be looking at it. I mean, he was up front when he was at Palace. Wilf played up front a bit, but he was he was a striker when Roy was Mateta didn't play Benteke. No, it was I it remember was that's a very good question. Man, it was, it, it, so it, was a time where, it was a time where we were, remember it was a time where we were, when we were 4 4 2 and it was Wilf and Andros up top. Oh yeah, I remember that as well. You know there's, what I mean? There's quite a few changes, exactly. There's yeah, quite a few you know, changes. And, and that's why, and, and that's why so that example alone makes me wonder and understand that there could be so many different combinations that, that we use possibly, especially if we go 4-4-2. But I think the other thing outside of getting guys confidence together is um, who you're playing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who's out there on the pitch? I think the, the one thing that people have been calling for and wanting so much is the, the, the attacking combination of Edward, Zaha, Elise, and Eze. And we've only seen it for a, a, a very small sample size of time, which uh, shout out to um, uh, CPFC Tampa on um, on Twitter, on Twitter uh, yeah. my, my, my boy Pablo. Pablo did a deep dive into it. And when we play those four is when we've actually got some of our, our the most wins is when those four have been in the game together. So I think part of it but too then, is, is playing the right. How game. you play the four. How you play the four as well. I don't think this yes. four how you play the four. How play the, yes, how you play the four is correct. And and I think he, he, we we saw the most success when Elise was on the right, when Eze was through the middle, Edward up top, Zaha on the left. I think we had something like four wins, uh, two losses, and maybe one or two ties. So it, it's one of those things that, along with of course getting guys' confidence back and getting that together. You know, I think you got to get the guys out there that can produce and score goals for you. I mean, yes, Jordan Ayew works his socks off, and he's going to do – he has so many intangible things that he does for a club um, when he's on the pitch. But for a team that is struggling to score goals, he is then working you at a net negative because – He's not going to be highly involved in goal contribution in the form of. Yeah, but assist. then it also helps defensively as well. You don't want to just go all out attack and, and start. And, and that's what I mean. And, 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 that's, and that's what I'm two, saying. Two, like, two, you, you, can play, you can play him in there. So you have to you find can a play him. You can play him, and he's going to do great things for you tracking back, winning the possessions, winning fouls. But when it comes to the other side of goal contribution and goal scoring, he's not going to help you there. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, do I, do you choose to 
really let your defenders defend and just let you, yeah and, and and have your your attackers be more focused on attacking or you know because like the thing about it is I feel confident with Michael Elise on the right because he tracks back it's been proven mm. and he does it like I, I don't think there is any he's been, argument he's been, he's been great defensively yeah there's I, no more argument to be had. There's, there's no back. more argument to be had about Michael Elise yeah. and how much he defends so on the right that's different um if you're playing Eze in a 10, he doesn't have the defensive responsibilities that he does if he's an eight. So there's that. So I I don't know, man. I mean, I guess it just depends on what, what you're looking for. I mean, honestly, if I am looking to solve my problem of goal scoring, then I'm going to start as a Elise, Edward, and Zaha up top. Yeah, That's just... Like I think that that it doesn't make sense to do anything else different because I think any other moves are are hurting you negatively in the goal scoring area. Yeah, and it'll be something different as well. I think it'll look. Uh, I I think he'll change his team anyways, uh, especially with the formation. I think that there's yeah. a change there. I don't think it'll be yeah. the same formation that Patrick Guerra had, and um, that could pose as a surprise to teams. Saying that, I think. Teams already know how Roy has set up in the past and how they will set up. So I don't think it would be that much of a shock. But then again, you know, on the counter-attack, them four players could be very dangerous Scary. to a formation like the 4-4-2. Mm-hmm. But for you, what type, of, what type of team are you expecting against Leicester? I mean, all these questions we're asking right now, this is probably one of the hardest previews to do because it's literally... Is it going to be the old Roy? Is it going to be a new Roy? We don't know what to expect. After the Leicester game, it's going to be a bit easier for us to preview games coming up. But right, right now, it's like, it's a, it's a new territory in a way because we've got better players than we had when it was last at Palace. Right. And it dep- and some of the words that he's using and the phrases that he's using in, a- ahead of the game, it sounds like, you know, he he's up for it. He's up for it. So does that mean he's going to attack? Is that Does that mean he's going to be defensive? We don't know. We don't know. I don't think anyone knows, and that's the that's the that's the thrill and excitement in a way ahead of this game. But for you, T, what type of team are you expecting? Do you think we might see some of those old <clears throat> players that we've that we've seen under Roy come into the starting lineup against Leicester? Man, and that's and that's a great question, man. Like, it, do we see some of those old players? And if we do see some of those old players, who could they be, and where could they play? Um, my thing is like Roy, Roy is seasoned, man. He's smart. He's been, he's been around the block multiple times. So I think one of the things he, he is, is he's a student of the game and he really knows the game tactically. He understands what players need. And one of the things that's going to stand out to me as far as like going back to that subject of how do we get the most out of Odson Edward, for instance, when he was at Celtic, he was not a lone striker. He played in a two. Hmm. I think Roy knows that, pays attention to it, and probably puts him in a two if he's up there. If he if he plays him, if he starts him, if, he, if he's in there, I think he plays Ed, Edward in a two. Who that other striker is, is is a question. I think it would be Wilf, to be honest with you, because I think Wilf gives you the most flexibility between goal scoring and the fact that Wilf can pass and play off of Edouard really well. Um, I think I, that's what I would think to see there. Um, and if that's the case, like I said, four four two, I I think he'll go as a Elise because he played as a wide left when 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 he was here before, and. That started out a little tough for Ezek. He had to learn it, but as he got more used to it, and as Roy gave him the keys, a little more, let him play with more freedom and drift inside, it ended up working out pretty well for us. The question for me is what we're going to look like in the middle, and who's going to be at right back. I think those are my two questions. I think right back, the, I'm, not really, I'm not really worried about right back because I don't. Either I'm, way, I'm I mean, it's not, it's not really. I'm just interested to see who he's going to choose. Because both of those guys are perfectly healthy, so I'm just interested to see who Roy favors at this at this point. I think it's in midfield. I think it's in midfield. That's the most. I think it's. In, I, mean, in, in, we, like, I know we're struggling to score goals, goals but midfield. I'm, I'm a bit worried. I don't know why. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. But I'm a bit worried about the likes of Decore. I, 
not that he's a bad player, but you just don't know. Like he might, because as as you're saying, T, he's a student of the game. But let's be real, he was very stubborn as well. Yeah, he was very absolutely. stubborn with his approach as well. It, it wasn't all great. Like we're trying to stay optimistic now, but it wasn't all great. I remember seeing the same subs. Forget about the same starting eleven. The same subs happening for the same players yep. over and over again. But then again, yep. he's got an improved squad now, so maybe he. And that's he what you. That, that and that's what you hope for is that you wouldn't see that type of. You wouldn't have to see the type of stubbornness because he well, has you would, you better want options, to. more options. Yeah, yeah. But then, then again, I mean, we know we, we've 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 seen Roy long enough to know that it doesn't mean that he's not going to be stubborn. But then again, so in, in midfield, do you think it's going to be Decore that's going to be starting alongside who if it's a 4-4-2? Four, four, I do think... It's some butts right now, but... I, I, I do have a lot of confidence that it'll be Decore because he's hands down, without a doubt, the best midfielder we have. And I I I, I think Roy would be a fool not to know. Like, they, like that would be the biggest surprise for me. Um, for him not to play Decore. The question for me is who's playing next to him? Because yes. there is there's a lot of options. And I think um this is where uh the the older player choice can come in. Because you've got the option of Luca there. You got the option of uh MacArthur there. You know, um Why is Maca fit enough to play nine minutes? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But at the know. same time, Roy might be like, yeah, he's not fit enough for 90, but can I get 45 out of him? Can I get 50 to 60 out of him and just bring a I don't remember seeing him? him do that many halftime subs, I'll be honest. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Him. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what he thinks. Or or or, or is it is it somebody like Lakonga? Maybe he's watched him and seen him in, in, in training and he's like, yeah, this kid's pretty good. We, 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 we can play him there. You know what I mean? So I think that's that spot – in the four four two, or even if it's a, a four three three, that other midfield spot is probably the biggest question mark for me right now. Yeah, yeah I think midfield is hundred percent. I mean, yes, we are struggling to score goals. I I understand that, but midfield is interesting. Midfield is very interesting because, yeah, who does it put there? I, I'm a bit worried that he might he might have Luca or. In a way, I am. I can admit this. I am a bit worried even about Maka to a certain extent because I don't know how fit he is. I mean, yeah, on I mean, paper, he was, any, he was a great player for us, but I don't know how fit he is. And, and we can sit here and talk about all these different options too and like even talking with, with, the, with the attacking four, man. Come Saturday, it could pop up. We could have IU in the lineup. We could have Schlupp in the lineup. And we could have Luka Milivojevic in the lineup. Yeah. I think that's Honestly. a mad thing. We're, we're talking about like we're talking like IU ain't gonna start. I think <laughs> IU will start, but then who, who does <laughs> IU start for? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. yeah. All right, so like, who does it start for? But look, let's look at the league table um, as we always do. Pre-game week 29. Palace currently sit 12th in the league. Mm-hmm. If we do win, we'll remain 12th. If we draw, we could potentially go down to 17th, and a loss could take us down to 19th. Which is a bit mad. That's so, crazy. how important is this game in terms Very. of is this a must-win game? It's like another team struggling. Man. It's a it's it's a team that isn't high on confidence. Mm-hmm. And going into this game, the fans are saying we don't care if you have Roy, if you have Vieira, you're still going to beat us. So the fan confidence is low, the team morale is low, but they've got quality players. But for you, especially with the fan base, I mean, there were some people, not some, there were a lot of people that didn't want right the club. Surely this is a game that you cannot lose because if you lose this game and also don't play good as well, then You're in trouble. things are going to look bleak again rather than, you know, we're talking about some of the positives, but it could look bleak once again. I feel like this game, especially at home, if we win, the momentum to the fan base, to the players, even to the manager to a certain extent would be massive. Facts. I know we've got 10 massive games coming up, but this one could, in a way, shape our next nine games after this, especially in the manner of, you know, the manner of win, or if we lose, how would do we lose? You know, we, we, we this is a team that's struggling. So for UT, how important is this? It's like you said, every game from here on out is like a cup final, man. Um, It's very important because... We're always going to be in a better situation if we're playing from above the relegation zone compared to playing from in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, it's, a, it's a very, very different outlook, a very, very different level of, of desperation 
that comes with playing from inside 2019 18th place. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a, it's a different level of of desperation. It's a di- yeah, different yeah, yeah. level of especially from 12 play. So like you know what I'm saying? Imagine. Yeah. Imagine you know what I'm saying? Com- comparatively comparatively to the to, to the fact that if you come in here and you get a win, you get those three points and that 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 extra cushion to keep you above the relegation zone. Um, there comes a little bit less pressure with the the next match that you have to get a win. You know what I'm saying? If we if we if we if we come in here, we get this three points, and we go what five points above the relegation zone. Um, then the next match, we don't have as much pressure to win it. Uh, get a result, yes, because if you get one point, that's another added to it. That's six, and that, that's 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 six points uh, above. So I'm saying. The reason why you really want to get this win, why you really want to get this decision is because it's a very, very different outlook and different way you have to play when you are playing from inside the relegation zone comparatively to above it. And I think that is what we need to be trying to do. We need to stay above um, and and allow ourselves to to uh, to keep progressing out of it rather than going into it and having you know digging that hole so to speak and trying to get out of it yeah look in their last five games Leicester they've got no wins only drawn one game and that was against Brentford they lost against Chelsea Southampton Arsenal Man United some very good teams there to be fair but it's actually wild how much they're struggling we're talking about a team that was competing for top four not even that long ago Mm -hmm. Um, and all of a sudden now they're fighting about relegation and amongst the Leicester fan base there are people that are seriously saying that they could potentially get relegated so you know we talked about them having quality players but what players are you most worried about going into this game for me it's James Madison I think he's still a great player he played for England the other day as well Mm -hmm. Um, they got some other you know players that stand out as well but I think James Madison and that midfield that's my biggest concern yeah, if you go with the two midfield and they might go with maybe a three, try overload the midfield. It could be long. It could be a long day with the playmaking abilities that they got in that team, despite struggling. So for you, T, is it Madison? Someone else? I mean, they have some. I mean, if for all of the deficiencies they have of a, as a team, they really have some 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 bright spots. Midfield being one of them. You know, you got guys like Yuri Tillemans, um, uh, Kieran Dewsbury Hall. Um, I'm not sure if uh, indeed he's back playing in the midfield or not. Cause I know he's playing. He's I don't playing. think he's playing as much. I, I'm, I remember talking to a Leicester fan about it, but he's not playing as much. But I think he is available. He just he's not yeah. playing in Brendan Rodgers. Um, don't forget Harvey Barnes, who they got some, they got some quality players. They got some quality not... players. Leicester's issue is in defense. That's their issue, and I think uh, that's where it's because I mean. Their, their defense has been decimated for one reason or another, you know, from losing guys like Wesley Fofana to injuries. Um, you know, they just completely, you know, threw the, the Soyuncu guy to the side. I mean, he's about to leave. Yeah. And they got this new guy, Face, and he's an ex- absolutely terrible defender. Like, it's crazy. He's, he's playing for his country. You're saying this now. Watch him have a 10 out of 10 performance. Hey, and, 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 and let me say, it wouldn't surprise me one bit coming against us. Because Do you remember we last were... time? I don't know if you remember, but last time we were facing Leicester, it was Daniel Ward in goal. And that was the thing we were talking about. Daniel Everybody Ward, was like, oh, my God, we're going to be. We're gonna be yeah. Yeah. Gonna and he kept the cliche like against us. Yeah, yep. he kept the cliche against us. Do you get it? So I'm not even going to. Yeah, they got, they got some below average. Defenders, anyways, the way they're playing. Yeah, but it, if, I, if I'm thinking about anyway. the guys that 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 worry me the most, the guys that stick out to me are probably what you mentioned with uh, James Madison, but then uh, Kalechi Iannaccio and Harvey Barnes, probably the ones that that worry. Some me. very good attacking players, so we need they to do. Our game they do. I mean, and, and then we're not like I said, you know, and it's funny because traditionally it's always been Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy is always good for a goal against us, but you know he's old and he's not playing as much. You know, but who knows? He can come off the bench and, and grab one too. So hopefully not. Yeah. In, in terms of Palace, I'm looking at Wilf. I'm looking at Wilf. I, I know this might surprise people, but I don't know about you, but he's been a bit quiet lately. Even even when you know Vieira was at the was at the team, of course, he had to, had to, his performances weren't that great. And you know he needs to step up. It doesn't get spoken about as much because we talk mm-hmm. about other players, but for me. 
he does need to step it up because I know he's got in his locker. He's been quiet. He's been quiet. I know he's come back from injury. Yeah, but yeah. He's, mm -hmm. But maybe with Roy coming back to the side and him scoring goals under Roy, um, he was one player that did actually score goals in a side that didn't create that many chances. Um, so I'm expecting him to step up in a game like this because we need, you know, if we're talking about struggling to score goals, we need our best player, our best attacker to be able to, you know, pull out even like a seven or eight out of ten type Thanks. of performance. I mean, lately he's yep. just been, he hasn't been good at all by his standards. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, man. I think um, we haven't seen the wolf that we had earlier in the season uh, most recently. And, you know, a lot of that could be accredited to him coming back from that injury. Uh, come back rather fast in, in, in a lot of ways, too. But um, I think that the two-week break probably has helped him out um, pretty considerably, especially being that he didn't go uh, on, on international duty with Cote d'Ivoire. So he's had those two weeks to hopefully, uh, you know, you know, get, of course, trained, but also, you know, get his therapy in with the physios and, you know, uh, continue um, any type of uh, residual um, treatment that he's needed. So uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, we, we, we see a high quality Wolf. So uh, I, I'm definitely with you on that one. My pick would be Eberechi Eze. Or Eze. I, I really want to see him get to back back to his high level of play. You know what I mean, and I don't know. Maybe, like you said, maybe maybe Roy has that uh, that ability to get it out of him, you know, or just the faith in him. I think, uh, like once again, going back to that, the point of uh, if you to get the 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 best out of some of these players, man, they have to feel comfortable that you have belief in them. You know what I mean? That they can just go out and they can play free and they can play loose and not have to worry about whether they're they're going to play the next week or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a tough thing at any level. So guys like him and and, 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 and Odson wondering if they'll be able to even touch the pitch the following week, regardless of how good they play. Shout out to Chris Richards. It's like, oh, player, player of the month. Oh, you're not going to play. Did, uh, yeah, you just got, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You throw it under the bus. I was so surprised. Like, <laughs> oh, 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 you're going to get player of the month? James Tompkins. Come in here and play. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, so, it, didn't, it didn't make sense. Look, as much as I love Vieira, some of the stuff didn't make sense. I'm yeah, so, so it's one of those one things, man. I hope that out of out of everything that comes from this this uh, this uh second time around with Roy, man, I just hope that he gives guys confidence and, and that players can, 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 you know, play free, play loose, and, 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 and really just be themselves, you know what I mean? Because I think, I think that's what we need, man. Like, we have attacking talent. We have defensive talent. I think the biggest thing is that they just need to to feel confident and, and play well, man. In a funny way, I am a bit optimistic. I am. Um, based on, you know, the earlier times when Roy was at a club rather than the latter stages. Right. You know, when we were actually getting results, you know, scoring goals as well. And with the squad, we should be playing like that. We shouldn't be playing like how it ended with Roy. I mean, the squad is way better than the squad that ended with right. Roy. Even though we've got some of the players still here, but we've got be better attacking players to help support Wilf um, as well. So it should be like that. Now, score predictions. <laughs> this is a fun bit. I honestly, okay. I don't know what to predict. I, I, look, this show has been, we don't know what to expect. <laughs> it's like the scenarios, we, the basic scenarios, would it be A or would it be B? So... After this game, I'll, I'll see if I'm so excited about it. But the excitement is there because I, I want to see what happens. I want to see what changes, if anything changes. Do we get worse defensively? Because this could also go the other way around. We could even get worse. I mean, yes, we're not scoring goals, but we could also lose our defense um, yeah. in a way. And we, can't, we might yeah. start conceding goals. But for you, T, against Leicester at home, we've had this international break where he's had the time to know, to know some of these new players, to work on a few things. How do you see it going? <clears throat> I don't want to go realism. Don't want to go optimism here. Um, Bro, I can't even pick between realism or two. I don't know what's the difference between them. I honestly don't. I don't know what. Like I I'd don't say know the what difference between them with. is an extra is one extra goal. That that, that that's my thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go two one Palace. Um, I think the attack is going to 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 look pretty good with us. I think one of the major things that we're going to see difference in is we're not going to see 
as attacking or as a, um attacking scheme uh, with fullbacks um and with that being said i think that means we'll see more pushing up from 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 midfielders to to contribute so um yeah i'll go 2 1 palace yeah, 2 1 palace i'm going to go for uh, i wanted to say 2 1 as well 1 0 1 0 palace okay um just get one goal keep a clean sheet proper roy ball yeah you know, defense let's, style. Let's, yep exactly I'll, I'll take it i'll take it with one nil any day of the week clean sheet at home we need to get a positive result hopefully we do get one because if we don't i just feel like it's going to be a bit toxic again there was a fan base it seems like has calmed down a bit because we haven't mm-hmm. had any games mm-hmm. i've had time to digest the news but on saturday it's going to go one way or another unless we get a draw which um it still probably doesn't remain the same anyways because a draw, I don't know if people will be happy with that. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Your score predictions and thoughts ahead of the game. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit the like button if you have enjoyed the content and subscribe to not miss out on future content. That's it from me, Auntie. And until next time, up the palace.